Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. Back with the man, myth, the legend, somebody that goes by Millennial Mike. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on. I almost called you Captain America, but you know. I'll take it. That'd there be a compliment right there. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Well, first episode we do together is you scour my comment section uh, for uh, hater aid or perhaps <laughs> some interesting questions. Uh, when I just so people understand how I treat my YouTube channel, first and foremost, I'm the only one that interacts. So if you see a response, it's from me. Uh, generally speaking, I try to get to everybody's comments. I delete Bitcoin and other kind of crazy things, Telegram stuff, all get deleted, mm -hmm. blocked. Mm -hmm. Uh, I do not generally have time, nor do I care to go back and forth with anyone. So if you're you're looking for a, you know, you you say something, I say something, you say something, not coming for me. I won't right. re-engage. Right. I, you know, I will comment once and then I'm off to the next one. This this is um <laughs> yeah. And I can do that as long as I can. It it takes probably an hour of my day at this point to to make sure everything gets a comment. Uh at some day in the future, maybe I can't, but uh that's kind of how I treat comments on my channel. So thank you very much for everyone you leave. I'm sure it helps the algorithm, uh, but I will not engage in multi-threaded conversations via comments. It's not going to happen. Yeah, if you want to get into that uh, healthy bout of fisticuffs in the comments section, you're probably better off insulting the lumberjack landlord because he will he will take you down. Yes, he, <laughs> <laughs> he will go surgical, as he likes to say. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, yeah. So in this video series that Mike and I do, it's your opportunity to be heard. If you leave a comment down there that's spicy enough to draw attention from other commenters, or even maybe you get the uh, the valued one sentence to one paragraph <laughs> response from Zuber, your comment might make it into this video series. So leave a comment here, comment on his videos throughout the week. If I find them and I like them or they're good or thoughtful or even you just a hater you might get featured so in this video we're going to start off with the topic of and there's a few questions like this the topic is mike you're wrong a crash in prices is coming in fact they're already falling so alex huang asks i don't understand how transactions go down but prices go up once houses stay on the market longer then price cuts go up, which is currently happening in a lot of markets, which means the prices of homes must go down. Isn't this already happening in June? Uh, gosh. So a, cu a couple of thoughts. And yeah, that is, that is a multi-threaded question that I could never respond to in comments. I'm, you know, I'm not going to take the time. So I'm glad you picked up on that one. So first, first and foremost, uh, let's be very clear. The simple act of more listings means nothing. Right. So, for example, just today on the Daily Financial News, I got data from Brian Lebo about Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, Las Vegas, Nevada had 100 percent more inventory. Wow. They had 26.6 percent less transactions in a month. And the median price went up year on year by 14 or 15 percent. So not only is it possible, it is freaking very likely people. <laughs> Uh, the reason is because of how median is calculated. Median is nothing more than the middle. It's not average. It's the middle. So if you live in a world where the Federal Reserve broke housing, if you live in a world where Wall Street is dominating the low end, and once they buy a unit, will never come back, and you're seeing transactions fall, and it's skewed to the higher end just because there's no activity in the lower end, the median price, logically and mathematically speaking, has to go up. I'm not saying that's a good thing. I'm not saying it's a healthy market. I'm just saying you're going to hear Zillow and Redfin and Diana Olick and Wall Street Journal talk about housing crash and transaction, which I would argue a 26.6% crash in a month is a crash. Right. That's transactions. <clears throat> but folks, the prices are up, right? The actual value of what is traded. Second, you list a price at a wish price and you whack it twice. Does that mean the you finally found value? Not at all. One of the things that we're going to see in an environment like Las Vegas that doubled their inventory in 30 freaking days. We don't know what the actual percentage is, but I guarantee you lots of those listings are wish prices. Lots of those listings will be on the market for 30 or 45 days and then disappear. They won't sell. The seller will just say, nobody understands my market. I will just stay put. Folks, the Fed broke housing. There are people sitting in a home today that would love to sell, have a 2.6% mortgage. If they don't get their price, they can't move. 
What are they going to do? Rent somewhere else for more money? This, <laughs> this is so crystal clear to me that transactions, I now believe that we are going to see the f- largest drop in transactions peak to trough that we've seen in the last 52 years. Worse than the Great Recession. The reason the Great Recession won't be as bad is because we were trading foreclosures and short sales. We don't have forced sellers today. We do, but it's less than 1% of the market. So um, we will have a crash in transactions. In fact, it will happen faster than people think, a la Las Vegas. I called it two weeks ago when I said Vegas is dead or the party is over or whatever. It already happens. Uh, We're going to hear national numbers that are frightening. They won't be as bad as Vegas, right? Vegas is the canary in the coal mine. Uh, But you will hear numbers that are frightening. And um, transactions will go down. I believe now that realist transactions going down will cause a deep, dark recession, Q3, Q4, because of all the the commissions and broker fees and jobs and all of that that's just not sloshing around. Cash out refis have gone down to nothing. They're down 80%. So it's crystal clear to me. And no, just because transactions fall does not mean prices fall. That's a fallacy. That's not how it works. It's They're not connect. This is not stocks or crypto. This is where this is water, food, shelter. This is a necessity of life. The options are you're not going to live on the street, at least in most of the cases. So no, whoever that was, they're not connected. That's just wrong. Yeah. On, uh, on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, water, food, shelter, uh, stocks and crypto trading, that's a little higher up there. It doesn't quite matter just as much. <laughs> Okay. All right. Let's move on to the next question, kind of in a similar topic. And then I I may have some rebuttals for you. So Jay Garcia says, on the one hand, he, that's you, is licking his chops at the prospect of being able to offer less than list price and suggests that all buyers do the same. But then he immediately says there will be no real price declines this year. Either the seller is going to want to sell or they won't. And if they do want to sell, then that means lower prices to me. And I'm already seeing some of it. So yeah, so the question, Mike, is, okay, how can you tell your viewers, your subscribers, that sellers are going to be pushed to sell and you're excited to offer lower than list prices, but yet you're still saying that prices aren't going to come down. How does that make sense? Uh, Well, first off, my voice, at least as we sit here in 2022, is not big enough or deep enough to really impact a housing market of 6 million (laughs) transactions. My voice typically touches 20 to 25,000 amazing folks every day, of which maybe 10% of them are really doing the work. Uh, So yeah, I hope every one of my students uh, gets a great deal. I hope nobody pays the list pricing. I hope all of my students get sellers to give closing costs and buy down the rates. You should all be doing what I'm doing. I tell you what I'm doing every day. I am, dude, I am, mar- I'm spending thousands of dollars marketing, calling a housing crash, even though I don't believe it, because I only need one or two sellers to say yes. So uh, I will find one or two sellers that say yes to my lower price. Many of my students are already doing it, but we are not big enough to skew a national number. It's, it's cute to think about. Um, maybe in a couple of years when we're, we're you know, helping you know, 2 million a day, maybe, uh, but I'm not big enough today to influence a national market. I wish I was, but no, not yet. So, so, you know, I think, I think that the, uh, the point to remember here is right now, you know, a year ago, we had uh, a market with a ton of people selling, but as sellers drop out of the market because buyers drop out of the market because it's hard for people to sell and then buy somewhere else, the, there, there's going to be a larger percentage of all sellers that are now motivated sellers. And the reason is, is you still always have deaths, divorces, and just people getting depressed, like me living in the Pacific Northwest on July 3rd, and it's still raining outside. It's just, <laughs> it just makes me want to cry and move to Florida. So there's always going to be people who are dying, getting divorced, or just depressed. And well, those there, people- uh, There's also one more. You're absolutely right. But you also, people need to remember that. And again, I only can say this because I've been doing this for 20 some years. The last two years, junk, mm-hmm. non FHA quality stuff for people that don't know, you know, that don't know what junk means, it doesn't qualify FHA, was selling at retail prices. Yep. In a world where buyers disappear, I promise you, junk will sell at a discount because mm-hmm. FHA, VA, all of these buyers, they can only buy a subset of the market. And when the limited buyers we have only can focus on the perfect properties, this other stuff will go at a discount. So it's even more than just death, divorce, job transfer. It's, damn it, my you know, 1980s safe but unupdated home 
it's not getting showings. I can't get list price. Well, maybe I got to drop it 40 grand because the remodel is going to be 35. So again, what, what we finally have is a market that is slowing down where, you know, money is not being rained down on fools. And if you, if you do the work, you should only do great deals. We're not talking good anymore. Good left the building. We're only doing great deals. Do the work. It'll take time. This is Vegas falling 26.6% in a month. It won't be national. They're the canary in the coal mine. Uh, but do the work. You're, you're going to have your opportunities later this year and next year. It's going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. Stop fighting it. Just do the work. Right. Okay. Next question. Still on the similar topic. Uh, <laughs> this guy's name is another Google user. Oh, and he sure. says, I don't know why you're so against prices crashing, Michael, because as you've said on your channel multiple times, you hate the idea of prices crashing and saving money. Uh, he goes, I, I don't know why you're so against prices crashing, Michael. You keep saying transactions will crash. And if that happens, naturally prices and valuations will come down. They go hand in hand. Well, you just answered that. Here's what's going to happen. Job loss during this recession plus rising interest rates will cause the crash. People don't have to sell until they lose their job. Then they have to sell. Just because this is different than 2008 doesn't mean prices won't come down fast and hard due to other circumstances. So first and foremost, my channel would be bigger if I would get on the bandwagon of saying, a housing crash is coming. Mm -hmm. I cannot intellectually get there and I won't ever be intellectually dishonest. It's just not who I am. I don't need this. I don't need to make 10 grand a month on YouTube screaming crash in every video like some people do. My, my life's good without this channel. So if I, don't, if I saw one coming, I'd call it. I, and, and let's be, so that's the first thing. My channel would be bigger. I would get more views every day if I would just give up, lie to myself and say crash 17 times. And then I could pick <laughs> up you know, like seven little unique variables that say a crash yeah. are coming without telling you the whole picture. And none of you would hold me accountable because what would I do? Like the other channels, I would just delete my old videos because nobody, you know, it's okay. People were calling a crash in 2020. And I'm like, that's mathematically stupid. It's just dumb. It's the second best year <laughs> in 32 years to buy a home. And of course their videos are deleted now. Yeah. But whatever. So second, m for me personally, Olivia and I, I want this to be very, very clear. Nothing would make me happy. Nothing. Other than maybe waking up and being 25 again, nothing would make me happier than having a 50% housing crash in Fresno, California. Nothing. Nothing on this God's green earth would make me happier than, a t other than being 25 again. I would love a housing crash. I don't intellectually see one coming. So why... But I do see a nasty transaction crash, which will sap trillions of dollars from the U.S. GDP and probably is more important than all this other stuff. But nobody wants to give me credit for it. And it's going to be amazing. Just this morning, Vegas down 26.6 prices up 15 percent year on year. I'm right. I am right. But nobody wants to give me credit for this. <laughs> and then, you know, yeah. And then lastly, let's talk about the boogeyman in the room. What could cause price crash. Okay. You talked about unemployment. Mm -hmm. I agree. If unemployment goes from 3.6% to 10% and stays there for a year, that could be a problem. That would likely leave. Housing moves too slow. Again, housing is shelter. If you live in a home and your mortgage is less than rent, what are your options? Are you not going to pay your rent your mortgage? So you can get kicked out and live on your parents' couch, live with your sister? Maybe, but that's not going to be your first option. Your first option might be to get roommates. People will fight tooth and nail to stay in their home because rent or downsizing is a worse option. That's what all these people don't get. This whole, like, if unemployment goes from 3.6 to 5%, that won't affect housing at all, at all. For most of my economic career, we believed and we were taught back in the you know, 90s that 6% was full employment. It wasn't until the mid-2000s that we said 5%. And yeah, today we're at 3.6. So unemployment could go all the way to 5%, which is about a 50% jump. And we're back to full employment still. So yeah, people, can, people just want to crash. They right. want to believe these people because either A, they like to see people suffer. B, they feel like they missed out. 
you know, fine. Believe what you want. I would benefit immensely with a 50%. If someone's listening upstairs, <laughs> please give me a chance at 50% off. I would love it again. Uh, and again, so, my channel would be bigger with if I said crash. I just don't see it, man. I just intellectually can't get there. Well, we've beat this topic to death, but I think the important thing to remember is if, if, if Mike here is saying something that is, first of all, unpopular and going against the grain, second of all, contrary to his interest to grow on YouTube, third of all, contrary to his interest to grow his own real estate portfolio, then the only reason you could possibly be saying it is if it's actually something you truly believe and think is going to happen because it does not benefit you in any way. And to a lot of the people, it, well, actually, we'll get to that comment in a minute, but it's that it's against his own interest. So oh, why would he hugely, say it? Hugely against my own interest. Okay, so those were all the people who were saying, Mike, a crash is absolutely coming. You're in denial. And now we have somebody who's apparently gotten the complete opposite perspective from your videos. And they're saying, stop hyping up a crash because it isn't happening. So capital LJ space capital R says, <laughs> I'm realizing that this channel seems to be capitalizing on crash, 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 but this is affecting people's lives. You're only in it for yourself. Legacy, you say? Legacy to see people's lives, the sellers, deteriorate? I definitely would not want to leave this legacy behind. Misleading headings are just that, misleading. And no, I'm not a hater, but you're getting ahead because of people who believe in your headings because you're toiling with trust. Sellers need to get smart and not cave to these tactics. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what in my channel set this guy off. I'm, <laughs> Either. I'm, yeah, I don't, I, there's, so again, I don't, I'm not calling a crash. I don't think one's coming. I think a crash in transactions. Uh, I do think there will be some motivated sellers and I want to be there to help them. Uh, if there's nothing about my channel or my history uh, that says I take advantage of people, um, I grind people, I don't retrade, there's nothing in my history or my performance that says I do anything that was said there. I might market to housing crash. I might use those things because, again, I think we will have the worst housing crash ever in transactions, or at least 52 years. It's, I've only studied back to 1970, so I can't speak further. Uh, I really believe that. Um, so I don't know what set this guy off. I don't think there's anything in, I feel good about what I'm doing. I feel good about how we're helping people. So I don't know what set them off. I, I, when I read this comment, and so you have to hear it from me the first time I get to read it and reread it, reread it and watch the video in context. And what, what it sounded to me was this guy sounds like he is a seller who's frustrated that he missed the top. Oh, and he, and he does not want to miss the top. And now when you're out here saying, hey, now's your opportunity to negotiate with people who are motivated to sell, he's saying to himself, well, how could you say this to me? I'm out here trying to sell my house for top Maybe. dollar still, which, first of all, in the last six years of it being a seller's market, you're not going to get a lot of sympathy from buyers. Yeah. Uh, and you're still close enough to the top. You're probably going to be just fine. Yeah. I, yeah. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Maybe. Again, yeah. I just... Comments are really weird. You never know where they're coming from. They could be having a bad day. They could have that right. experience, right? Where they've listed a house at some wish pricing and they've got zero mm -hmm. showings. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry. D demand and supply is a fickle bitch and you <laughs> missed it. So yeah, I, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So now we've had the people who say, stop hyping up the crash. And the people <laughs> who are saying, stop playing down the crash. And then we get to the people who just said, we don't even want to hear from you anymore, Mike. We just stop making predictions. So uh, wow. Hurtado Rosita 26 says, that's my only issue with Michael. People out there that don't understand the bigger economic picture will take his advice and predictions straight to the bank, which is dangerous and a little bit negligent. Finance is a really big deal, and it's important we consider all economic data and not just our own experiences and past successes. A response to that comment, because they were going at it in the comments, oh, from Building Builder Kip says, his shoot from the hip predictions and strong conviction can definitely put a lot of people in a bad situation if they're not careful. His show would be better without his predictions, and I, and I said it first claims. So these folks down here are arguing, saying that they don't, and they also said in this comment thread, they don't think you're qualified to make mm. predictions. Apparently, they don't know you have a degree in economics. I guess not. And they think you're recklessly making predictions and that it's going to be to the detriment of people who follow you. What's your response? 
So again, I've been very clear on my track record in my history. So I have a degree in economics from a great university in California, Santa Clara, go Broncos. I have an MBA from the same university. I have 30 years of studying the consumer. I've done hundreds of transactions in real estate. Uh, I don't make predictions. I don't tell anybody what to do ever. Uh, when I make predictions, it's because what I, that's what I think is coming. I'm putting my money to work. I generally make macro predictions, i.e. I talked about CPI going up when others didn't. I talk about national numbers. Uh, there's nothing I talk about that is about anybody's buy box. Maybe Fresno would be the only exception because I've got you know 22 years of looking at it every day. So there's an, I don't think there's I don't talk about stocks. I don't make predictions on I don't make any predictions uh, for in uh, you know if you're making I, I don't know how you would use my CPI going up as a prediction. I talk about real estate transactions crashing. So yeah, I don't think I make any predictions that would. Uh, a should be taken to the bank. I'm wrong all the time. I do a daily show. Uh, and most recently I talked about, Hey, I thought a recession would come in 2023. Damn it. I think it's going to come early. Mm. Um, and frankly, I, I make predictions because I want to see how I'm doing. Right. I'm trying to get better every day and making predictions is hard. Um, yeah. Well, so I, I, think I, I feel good I about what I do. I think that, it, again, and I have the benefit of reading through the entire comment thread, and I'm not going to spend 10 minutes reciting everything right here. Um, but I think their frustration was, well, you know, you said that a crash or recession was coming in 2023. Now you've changed and you're yeah. saying it's coming in 2022. And sure. you're saying pri uh, housing prices, you know, aren't going to fall. But what if they do? If people take your advice, then they're going to be left hanging. And, and that that was really the the. Uh, the feel of the comment or whatever the, the theme behind it was don't take your advice <clears throat> my response for you would be mike's on mike's channel he presents not only a ton of experts um but what they do is they present different pieces of information that are all related to real estate sometimes yep. those pieces of information are related to the larger economy maybe the stock market maybe cryptocurrency mm -hmm. these are all financial financially related topics that he discusses but when people get to get information presented to them. They don't just want the charts, the graphs, the numbers. They also at the end want some type of analysis mm -hmm. as to what it all means. So it's very easy to say, oh yeah, you shouldn't take his predictions or he's recklessly making predictions. That's any YouTube channel, mine or anybody else. The point is you present some sort of thesis and you wrap it up with what you think is going to happen. And yes, you may be wrong in the end, oh, yeah, you may be course. right in the end, but who better to talk about housing markets than someone who's been around for a couple of different crashes, has a few different degrees, still means he can be wrong. Oh, yeah. But yes, I want to go on your channel. And when I read the freaking Google headlines first thing in the morning, I want to go to your, your channel and have it make some sense for me. Yeah. The other thing uh, I get a lot, and you can probably find comments on my channel like, hey, I, I, what should I do? Should I buy a house in so-and-so city. My response back is, I have no idea. I don't know your buy box. Don't know your financial situation. I don't answer those questions because who am I to say, right? Um, yeah, you, you, you shouldn't ask any YouTuber uh, what they think about your buy box. I, I, I have seen YouTubers get these, I don't know, these $5 thank you comment, whatever these mm -hmm. things are called, to say, hey, can you look at my market? Can you look at my market? Right. I think that is that is dangerous. I'll never That's reckless. do this. Right. It's yeah. reckless. Um, <clears throat> you look at one pretty chart in your mom's basement and you make a call. It's that's insane. I, I you can go through all my comments. Hey, I'm looking to buy a, a house in Fremont or I'm buying a house in Denver. What should I do? No idea. Don't know your buy box. Don't know your financial situation. Sorry. Yeah. I've spent uh, over two years investing in just Gary, Indiana, and I own now eight units in Gary, Indiana or excuse me, eight properties in Gary, Indiana. I'm extremely comfortable talking about just my buybacks. I can't tell you about commercial in Gary, Indiana. I can't tell you about large multifamily, small multifamily. I can tell you about my buy box in this one zip code. If you got a question, great, but I'm not going to try to tell people what's better about Birmingham, Alabama than where I'm at. It's just, it no would idea. be dumb. It'd be dumb, yeah. Yeah, so All again, right. if you don't, if you don't, again, if I'm going to be me, if you don't, if you don't appreciate you know, intellectually honest thoughts that can absolutely be wrong and frequently are wrong. Watch somebody else. I'm not here to entertain, right? I'm here to try to learn and get better. That, why do I take notes on my daily financial news? Because I'm trying to get better every freaking day. Every freaking day, I'm trying to learn more. The, the US economy, let alone the world economy, is a complex beast. Yes, consumers drive it, 
but then there's consumer sentiment and then there's consumer spending and then there's credit. It's a complex thing that can get all kind of disrupted when the government, the Fed come in and distort things. And then you have, you know, the president of the United States pointing a finger at gas stations and what, what do you have next price controls? Oh man, what's that going to break? And she's, yeah. so, you know, I'm trying to get better every day. And I've been doing this for 30 years and I try to get it a little bit better. So if you don't like it, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So changing topics here, mm -hmm. all about that green. <laughs> he says, unfortunately, all 14 of my offers have been outbid over the last 36 months. I'm 24 and I'm feeling scared as hell. FOMO is real. This was in response to you talking about how there's going to be more opportunities. Mm -hmm. So what do you say to people like this who are so beaten up and used to getting rejected? Mm -hmm that they should keep trying. Well, again, I know that don't know their buy box area, but I can tell you, uh, again, I talk to investors all the time and, and I've been very clear. I, I mean, for example, I think I did a video in 2020 where I, I told everybody I wrote a hundred offers and got nothing. That kind of, that kind of sucks. Um, so I, so the first thing I would tell you is you can ball, take that experience, put it in a big ball and throw it away because none of that is valuable going forward. Uh, I believe what happens on July 20th after National Association of Realtors report horrible numbers is that more and more buyers will disappear, which means FHA and VA buyers are going to get more and more important, going to get more and more service, going to get more and more options. I believe the next nine months will be so fundamentally different than the last three years experience. You'll have an opportunity. Keep doing it again if you want to, right? If you're scared or nervous, hey, you do you. Uh, but I would take that three years of experience because, again, the Fed rained money down. We spent $9 trillion out of helicopters. It's not real. And now we're paying the price. Uh, so your opportunities are coming. Uh, I, think, I think anybody who wants to buy uh, and can buy, because you have to, demand is a fickle thing. You have to want to and be able to. They're different. They're, it's a step function. Um, yeah, it's um, you're gonna have an opportunity. I think I think everyone who wants to will have a chance, and I hope you get a great deal, not a good deal. Yeah, all about that green. Uh, failure is only failure if you quit. So long as you keep going, every rejection is just another hurdle on your pathway to success. So just keep stepping over obstacles. I I wrote a hundred offers and got two counters. I mean, and got zero deals. So believe me, I know what that feels like. Right. All right, on the topic of Bitcoin and crypto, oh, Cam, you're right, I know your favorite. Cam3087 says, but you are in that world because at some point you said, I'm not really in the crypto world, but oh. you are in that world. You bought Bitcoin at 1% of your net worth in 2021. Did you delete your past videos of you talking about buying it? Oh, freaking. <laughs> oh, so, tired uh, of answering questions? No, 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 not at all. So A, I'm not in that world. Uh, be very clear. I'm not a crypto proponent. I don't have an FTX. You know, all these freaking new YouTubers have FTX accounts and sign up here, sign up there. Nonsense. That I don't have. So I'm not in the world. I bought an insurance policy, and I was very clear about that. In uh, the early 2000s, I bought an insurance policy with silver, a little bit of gold, but mainly silver. And you know, a decade or two later, I sold it and bought some houses. I bought one percent of my net worth because I didn't want to have that much silver in Bitcoin and in Ether or Ethereum, or whatever they call it. Uh, I bought it over a seven-day period, haven't looked at it. And I didn't buy it in 2021. I bought it in November of 2020. Uh, it's gone, it went up crazy and went down crazy. I don't give a rat's ass. I'm not adding more. I'm not buying more. I'm not selling anything. I don't look at it. It is an insurance policy. And because it was 1% of my net worth, if it goes to zero, I don't care. If it goes to a million, I don't care. Uh, it's an insurance policy. So no jackass. I'm not in that world. <laughs> I don't have some FTX bullshit relationship where I make money on my people doing this or that. That stuff is intellectually dishonest to me. I see big YouTube channels pushing FTX, this FTX, that not going to happen on my channel. Nope. Not going to happen. Yeah. I mean, I, you can have dollars and hundred dollar bills and use United States currency, but not still be a Forex exchange market trader. Right. Uh, Mike can own crypto. And that doesn't mean that he's out here trying to give his opinion on what's going to happen with cryptocurrency. I don't know. Okay, a uh, couple questions left. Looks like we got two more. So from a joys, if recession, if a recession hits this year, mm -hmm. do you see inflation softening this year also? And if it does, does the Fed then back down, presumably on interest rate hikes? 
yeah, so that's that is the uh, I don't know ten thousand hundred thousand dollar question. So first off, uh, I now believe and have since said that I was wrong, and I do believe a recession happens this year. So let's acknowledge that. Uh, I don't know when this comment came in. So yes, I think a recession happens this year. Will inflation come down? It has to. It has to. Uh, although I do think we have, I think we have peak inflation, one of the next three reports, and then I think it rolls over. Uh, I do not think it rolls over enough, in my opinion, to stop Fed rate hikes. I believe, and again, uncommon, and I get lots of hate for it, I believe the Fed raises rates at each of the next four meetings. I do not see a pause until 2023. I think the Fed is trying to get back uh, in the game. I think they have to rebuild a base so they can cut later. Um, so yes, a recession. Yes, we have peak inflation. Yes, it's down, but we probably end CPI for December, which comes out in January, still probably north of 5%, which is still too high, which means we probably have rate hikes at the next four meetings in 2022. So yeah, again, the economy is a complex beast, lots of moving parts. Um, it generally moves slower than people want. It's not the stock market. It's not crypto. It doesn't lose 40% in the weekend. <clears throat> It's, it's just slower, right? We probably won't even, like unemployment. Unemployment by the time December around, it's probably like 4.8, 4.7, 4.9. It's, it's not enough. The Fed knows unemployment has to go up as the economies. They know it. They, they, they won't say it, but they know there's going to be unemployment pain. But again, anything less than 5% is still considered full employment. It's just, it just is. Right, right. Okay, so the answer to that one is, yeah, the recession is going to happen this year. I think inflation could soften. It's going to peak here relatively soon, but the Fed's not going to back down, at least not until 2023. I don't think so, in my opinion. Yeah. All right. Last question from Isabel Sender. She says, please explain why buyers will retreat in a buyer's market. Mm -hmm. That's when I plan on buying. It's a serious question. Thank you. Your classic one-word response was fear with three exclamation marks. Yeah. Elaborate. <laughs> well, that's that's exact. So again, the greatest buyer's market I have ever been a part of was 2010. Where was everybody? They were afraid. afraid. <laughs> I mean, I, I it, you know, sometimes one word is plenty. Uh, and again, what did I say is coming on July 20th? July 20th is going to be a national report from National Association of Realtors that is going to show transactions crashing. It is going to cause buyers and sellers to react different. Buyers are going to see this crash in transactions and say, holy shit, I'm not going to be a part of it. I will run away. And sellers are going to go, oh my God, we just missed the top list, list in a hurry, which they're with wish pricing. It's mm -hmm. going to be just this dichotomy of one running away, run running to, and we're going to have 90 days of just a messy housing market. So yeah, consumers are predictable. When headlines get bad, they get afraid. And I keep telling people every negative headline I tell myself, and it's why I smile. There goes 2% of my competition. That's why I could buy properties, properties with an S like multiple at under land value that still had a structure on it because all of you were as scared. It's going to happen again. Consumers run in herds and I have gotten really good at identifying a herd and running the other way. All right, one final thought that I did have kind of related to our earlier topic of um, if the recession hits, hits hard, unemployment yeah. goes up. As you said, unemployment would have to go up to maybe 10% for a year, stay there. Mm -hmm. um, then the market could potentially be flooded with people losing their houses. Uh, my thought was, what do we have in recent times that would suggest otherwise? And that would be the very recent flash crash we had where the government extended forbearance. I don't think that the government is going to go down without a fight. And what I mean by that is they're not going to let themselves get kicked out of office because they let millions of people lose their houses. They're going to do everything they can. Unfortunately, most likely at the expense of the landlord, they're going to do everything they can to make sure that that housing market does not get flooded with houses. Yeah. So again, let me be very clear in what I think, what I thought I said earlier, I tried to paint a picture where prices could soften. I didn't say crash, or at least I didn't mean to say crash if I did on price. And again, let's define crash. That's 20% a year. Let's just put numbers on stuff. 
Uh, and again, I have history that says the largest national crash was 8.9%. And that was, two th- I don't know when it was, 2008 or nine. So national crashes don't generally happen that fast. Um, again, I think it softens prices. Because again, what, what you need are forced sellers. And you are absolutely dead on right. We get a, we get a, you know, unemployment, like again, what happened in Jan- or March of 2020? Unemployment went from, I don't know, call it 4% to 18% because we shut the country down. What happened by April or May? The banks have, banks and the government said, oh my God, nobody's paying the mortgage. So let's just extend and pretend, let's forbearance. So yeah, you're absolutely right. If something crazy, hairy, scary happens again and it's a huge wave, they already know how to fix it. They just put their finger on the hole and say, all right, we'll wait for this to get better and then we'll take our finger <laughs> off. But so again, I don't see... The, given the lending structure that currently exists, where 2% of loans originated in 2021 or before are fixed with credit, with downs, we don't ha- we're not going to have forced sellers. In order to get forced sellers to a number where prices could soften 10% for a year, I don't see it. I don't see it. Well, those were all the questions for this week. Folks, remember, if you want your question answered, leave it down in the comments here, or you could DM me on Instagram at Millennial Mike. That's a good way to get your question asked in this series. I like that. Yeah. Send him your haterade questions directly. Get them off my channel. Bring it on. (laughs) All right, Mike. Thanks, buddy.